Hello friends. In the last video, we covered how to loop in Haskell by mimicking a for loop, by using the map function, and by using the scanning functions. In this video, we are going to look at the remaining three ways I had previously mentioned. So let's get into it. List comprehension is a syntax sugar to build up a list in a way very similar to building up sets in mathematics. If you are already familiar with the set builder notation in maths, then Haskell syntax for it is very similar. It's just that instead of curly braces, we use square brackets to encapsulate lists. On the left part of the vertical line, we define the expression which will characterize each element of the resulting list. On the right part, we can define the generator which feeds the inputs to the expression on the left. We can also define filters to even narrow down the list as per our requirements. So, to solve our problem with list comprehension, let's call our function list comp iteration. Let's use the input number ends as the generator, and the expression would be passing all the ends to the square function. Let's see if this compiles, and it does. Let's test with our usual inputs, and we can see that we still get the correct result. In Haskell, you can zip two or more lists with a zipper operation. Just like in real life, where the zipper combines every block of each chain with the corresponding block on the other chain, you can combine corresponding elements in two or more lists with some operation. In Haskell, by default, the zip operation takes two lists and create a list of tuples of corresponding elements. But you also have a zip with operation, which takes a binary operation as an input and uses it as a zipper operation. For example, here we can take plus as the zipper operation and it produces the sum of corresponding tuples instead of the tuples themselves. In our problem, we can simply use our list as both the input lists of zip with operation and use the multiplication operation as a zipper operation to produce the required result which is squaring of each of the numbers. Let's check if our function compiles. It does. Let's test with our usual input and we can see that we still get the correct result. Instead of just being a simple data structure, lists are also something called monad. At the risk of oversimplification, a monadic computation is just a computation in some context. Let's say you have some function which evaluates to number 5. We call this deterministic function because you know what the number 5 is and there is nothing more to it. On the other hand, if the function returns a list of integers from say 1 to 5, you can say that it is a non-deterministic computation. It's up to you as the caller of that function to handle the several values returned by the function. In Haskell, anything implementing the monad interface has to declare the corresponding implementation of this operator called bind. The bind operator takes the values wrapped up in some monadic context and binds them with the function which can transform those values to, this, to some other values wrapped up in the same monadic context. Let's look at how this bind operation works on lists. We can use bind operation on any list with a function that takes any element of the list and produces another list. The monadic bind operation maps this function over all the elements of the list and concatenates all the resulting values in the single list. The misleadingly named return operator is another operation supported by the monadic interface, which just wraps up a plain value into the monadic context. In case of lists, it just creates a singleton list from the given element. To use this approach in our problem, let's call our function monadic iteration. We take the input list and bind it to a lambda function which takes each element of the list, squares it, and wraps it back into a list to preserve the monadic context. The implementation of bind operation on lists will take care of mapping this function over all the values of the input list and concatenating the resulting values into a flattened list. Let's check if our function compiles, and it does. Let's test with our usual input, and we can see that we still get the correct result. 
in order to simplify not having to write multiple lambda functions in case of repeated bind operations, Haskell provides a convenient syntax called do notation. If we want to use that, then our function would look something like this. First, we extract an element from the input list. Then, we square that element and use the return function to wrap the result into the list context. These actions will happen for all the elements of the input list as ensured by the bind operation implementation for the lists. Note that in the previous implementation of monadic iteration function, instead of explicitly wrapping the square n result into the list, we can also use return function to achieve the same thing. Let's check if our function compiles, and it does. Let's test with our usual input, and we can see that we still get the correct result. And that concludes this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more videos like this coming soon. As always, thank you for watching.